Oh, oh son, that's a good one right there, brother. And that's a hog right there, I believe. I believe I got a hog right here, son. Boy, we got a little hog right here. Yes, sir. All right, folks, welcome to the channel. Lynn TN Fishing here. All right, folks, I guess we're getting ready to do another video. Thought I'd talk a minute about my technique a little bit which there's nothing too awful special about it. I mean, I guess to me there's not. Here recently I've been using this little float right here. This little float right here has really kind of been a godsend for me. I found this float on the bank in my fishing spot. It's called a Billy Boy. It's kind of a heavy float. I'm guessing it's purposely weighted. It's real thick, durable. I had it for a good while now and it's become my favorite float. So when I lo lose this one, I'm going to have to get some more. I need to go ahead and try to find some before, uh, you know, before I lose this one someday. It takes on a little bit of water right there. It's still got a little water in it. But it's called a Billy Boy. It's a real durable float. This one weighs about 20 grams. I weighed it. It's about perfect weight for me for what I want to do to be able to make a real long cast. So that's part of the technique there is to use a weighted float at times to make a really long cast to cover more water. Uh, it really at times can make a huge difference there to have that ability to make those really long casts. Oh, we got one, folks. I get my camera turned on right here. Got a little cray pie right here. Decent little crappie, feels like. Yeah. Decent crappie right there. Not a bad one. Put him on that little green jig right there. There we go. I'm on that little green jig, Maybe about a nine or ten incher. Pretty little old crappie. Let's get a little crappie juice on that little green jig right there. Looking good. Looking good. Right here on the late January day, it's warming up to about 50 degrees. First crappie of the day, let's get him turned. There he goes. We've been kind of experimenting, tying up our own little jigs there. These little green ones are working pretty good. I like the green. It's, uh, you know, it works. The blue works too. My little blue jigs work. So it, you know, they all work. It's just nice to be able to mix them up. Another thing I've been doing is trying to sharpen my hooks. I think that helps. Particularly these hooks with this kind of anodized looking red color to them. They're not very sharp out of the box. I don't like them, but right now I've got that one razor sharp. See how it catches my skin there? Hey, you, you, uh, if you can get them that sharp where they don't slide across your fingers, but they'll catch real easy. When you get them real sharp, you'll know it because they'll stick to everything. It's like a little needle sharp and you touch the least little thing they touch they'll stick to and that makes a difference you know that can make a difference for sure so I've been doing that on a regular basis is sharpening that hook right there oh, son, boy, that's a good one there oh son that's a good one right there brother man I hope he don't get off I'm gonna go easy with him that's a hog right there I believe I believe I got a hog right here son oh boy that is a nice one oh my that is a nice one folks I believe I got that big one I've been waiting on right there. Boy, my heart's beating right here. I hope I can get him in. Oh. Whew. Oh, boy, that's a nice one. Yeah, I don't know. He's, maybe he's just hooked funny, but he's a, he's a good one. Maybe it ain't quite a hog. Oh, yeah, that's a good one right there, folks. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Oh, son. Got him on that little green jig right there. Let's get him rinsed off right here a little bit. That right there, folks. Look at that. 
I am on that little green jig right there. Check that out. Oh, yes, sir. Nice one right there. Nice one on that little green jig I tied up the day before yesterday. Pretty little old crappie. Let's see if we can get him turned loose here. Maybe we can get another one. Seems like we got some, got some pretty big ones out there today, folks. One more nice look at him there. Let's get him turned loose. There he goes. Back out to the deep. So as far as depth goes, blow the bobber, you know, floating bobber there, jigging bobber, you know, fishing about uh, eight feet below the bobber. And uh, that's just the depth that works for me at the spot that I fish. You know, that could vary depending on where you fish. You may be in a spot where you need to only cast a few feet. You don't need a big old billy bobber float to cast a half a mile out through there. I do though, I like to have that ability to get out there and to parallel the bank and give myself more water to cover in that zone that might potentially hold fish. So in essence what I'm doing is I'm actually kind of trolling from the bank. I'm actually covering a huge amount of water by being able to cast so far and then being kind of selective on how I cast to maximize the little jig coming through the zone that's most likely to hold the fish there, whether it's a little piece of structure or, or whatever, or just an area that might just have some fish wandering through. So uh, anyways, it seems to work for me off and on there. Being attacked by a great blue heron. Oh my gosh, he nailed it right there, folks. He came up and slammed and jammed it. They are really in a feeding mood here today. They're hitting it hard. Decent crappie, I think. Not the same as usual. Real aggressive little little crappie right there today. He came up and nailed it. I'm fishing pretty deep, but they're not in nine feet of water. I'm just bringing this jig back real slow and letting it fall down. When I bring it back, it raises the jig up in the water column, and then I let it fall. Bring it back and let it fall. He came and nailed it. I'm going to go over to my little blue jig here, or at least go up a little shallow. More shallow on this other rod here in a minute and see how it does there. But anyways, that's crappie number three of the day. Pretty little old crappie. Hey. Got him on that little green jig right there, as usual. Last uh, few fishing trips. Done pretty good on that little green jig. That little flash on it right there. All right, let's get him turned loose right here. That water is pretty chilly right there. There he goes. As far as the reel goes, I'm using this President, this Fluger, President Fluger uh, 35B, I believe is the model number. I purchased this one a couple of months ago and it has worked out great. Smooth as silk, never any backlashes, never any flaws, never any problems. It just blows all my other reels out of the water as far as ease of use and how error free it's been as far as having line tangles and stuff like that. So yeah, the President Fluger and the 9 foot rod which happens to be a uh, ugly stick. Yeah, the rod happens to be an ugly stick GX2 which is nothing special. Just happens to be a really long rod that I happen to have. So I use it. It's not particularly sensitive. It's got a flaw in the guide system, so I would not recommend this particular version of the Ugly Stick GX2. Don't buy that unless you can get it at a garage sale for a quarter or 50 cents. Cast out and let it set on bottom, you'll probably be alright. But since I make hundreds of casts in a day, constantly throwing it out, reeling it back, throwing it out, reeling it back, that monofilament eventually ate a groove in the uh, in the guides there mainly in the tip it grooved out the eyelet of the tip there so bad I had to had to replace it so 
All right, I went over to this little blue jig. It's uh, got in on my shallow pole here. Hey, what that float on there is barely floating. I got too much weight in it or it's got a little water in it. So this setup is about a foot and a half more shallow. So I just wanted to work this area a little closer to the bank here for a second just to see how close in they might be and if they'll come up and hit this uh this little blue jig here got more boat traffic coming Here's this little blue jig back here got more boat traffic unfortunately folks they're coming for us Well, we're getting down here to the nitty-gritty. There we go. GoPro. There we got one right there. I'm recording. Went over that little blue jig, shallowed up. We got it. It's maybe a decent one. Well, I think that's a decent little fish right there. Decent crappie right there. Maybe that was a trick. Shallowed up a little bit. Went over the little blue jig. Oh, we got a little hog right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, boy. Oh, son. Look at that right there, folks. Look at that right there. Oh, man, now that, folks, right there is what we've been waiting on right there on the little blue jig. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at that right here before dark. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Looky here, looky here, looky here. All right, check him out, folks, right here at dark. Got him on this little blue jig right here. Big old slab Mac Daddy crappie right here at dark. That's number four today. Number four, right there on the little blue jig. Right there on the little blue jig. Get him turned loose right here. Let's get this big boy turned loose right here. Let's see if we can't get one more here before dark. Look, big old beautiful, beautiful crop right there. There you go. 